Hey, what's going on? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics, and today we're going to show you how to prepare, scan, and process a JZAC phantom. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be walking through the JZAC Phantom. You can go back and look at one of our previous videos uh, linked below where we talk about the JZAC Phantom and all the different pieces uh, that go with the Phantom, how to set it up. Today, we're actually going to be preparing the Phantom, setting it up on the scanner, and scanning the Phantom. And then we'll cover processing, Phantom, processing the JZAC Phantom in the next video. So the first thing that we want to do with the JZAC Phantom is we want to take out a little bit of um, water from the Phantom. So this Phantom was already uh, filled up with water. So I just withdrew about five cc's of water from the fill port. So just take out five cc's. You want to create a little bit of a, uh, of a bubble in here so that the Phantom has a way that it can, um, has enough uh, air that it can actually mix the technetium in. The dose that we're aiming for is somewhere between 20 and 25 millicuries of technetium. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, get that drawn up here. Okay, and we have 22 and a half millicuries. And now with our activity, we can go ahead and just Push it right into the phantom and go ahead and flush that syringe. And then we want to cap it. So go ahead and put your cap right on that fill port. Now we need to let it mix. Um, there's a couple different ways we can let this mix. One, we can just let it set. Um, and as it sets, it will go ahead and mix. Or we can speed that up and we can mix it just like what you would mix a kit. Um, by rolling it back and forth. You can also invert it a couple times, but be careful you don't want to drop it. Once you do that, you're going to have a couple air bubbles in here. So in order to get the air bubbles out, you can tilt the, um, the Phantom up so that the air bubbles come up towards the uh, towards the fill port. After you've got all your activity in the Phantom, you can go ahead and unscrew the fill port. Add your water or saline back in just to top the Phantom off. Keep those air bubbles out. Recap the fill port. Recap the fill port. And now we're ready to scan the Phantom. So go ahead and let's follow me over to the camera and we're gonna go ahead and get this set up um, to acquire the uh, transaxial slices. All right, so we've made it over to our camera with the JZAC Phantom. So we're gonna go ahead and get this positioned so that we can acquire our images. So the first thing we want to do is we want to flip this over so that it's um, sort of in the Z direction here. And I'm just going to position this on the table. And um, it doesn't necessarily matter a whole lot which, which way you have the, um, the rods and the spheres pointing in the Z direction um, because we can in post-processing, we can flip it around any, any which way that we want. So just important to get it up in this direction. And then we also want to put some kind of wedges on the side to keep it from, from rolling about whenever it goes underneath the camera. So I just have some alcohol prep pads. You can use two by twos or anything else. And that'll keep it nice and, and stable. So when I position the Phantom, I want to try to get, um, get it squared up underneath the detector as best as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and drive it underneath the detectors and just watch it up here on the P-scope. 
And I can also center up the center of the phantom with the center of the detector. Once I have the phantom basically where I want it, I want to look up at the P-scope and make sure that I don't have it tilted at all. And this one looks pretty good. So I'm going to now rotate the detectors around to a lateral position so that that's going to allow me to get the height of the table correct. So I have my detectors in about a 90 degree orientation and I'm going to adjust my table height to bring the phantom right into the middle of the field of view of the detector. And I can look at that right up here on the P-scope and make sure that I'm getting it in the center. And all this is doing is making sure that my sinogram and linogram are going to be straight and that I don't have a bunch of um, crookedness in my images. We're also going to need to figure out how uh, how long each stop is going to take as we acquire the images. We want a total of 32 million counts in our acquisition. To get 32 million counts, we need to take 32 million and divide by our count rate that we have, which is about 26K counts or 26,000 counts per second, multiplied by the number of stops, 128. And that's going to give us our time per stop. So let's go over to the acquisition terminal and show you how to set up the acquisition for uh, acquiring the JZAC Phantom. Okay, we have our patient that we've pulled up and we can check to make sure the detector's been peaked, which it has. And we can just click on through, make sure all of this stuff looks right. When we get here, we want to, um, we want to have our matrix at 128, that's correct. Zoom on a Siemens system at 1.45 is right stop condition so we want to put in our time per view again that is just our 32 million divided by the total number of stops which is 128 times r multiplied by our count rate so when we do the math on that we come up with 9.62 seconds and we're going to round that up to 10 seconds so we're going to do 10 seconds per view the detector configuration we're at 180 we want to change the orbit from circular to non-circular so that we use the um, auto contours on the system. And we want to keep it in step and shoot. We don't want to do continuous. Degrees of rotation. So on a Siemens system, these values, the degrees of rotation and the number of views, this is per head. So our total degrees of rotation is 360, which is what we want. And our total number of views is actually 128 because we multiplied this number by two. So this is exactly what we want it to be. Now that we have all of that set, we are ready to acquire. So prepare and start. We want both of those detectors to come in nice and tight to the Phantom. And there you have it. That's how you prepare, set up, and acquire your JZAC Phantom. Stay tuned for next week where we're going to talk about how we process the JZAC Phantom and analyze those images. If you have questions about a JZAC Phantom or how you acquire it um, or how you look at the images, feel free to drop us a note and uh, we'll be happy to help you out.